It's the final of the Aim Chess Rapid Tournament. Magnus Carlsen convincingly won the first set. So they went into day two with Artemiev having to win the second set to take the match to a tie break. This was game one of the second day. Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces. Vladislav Artemiev, well, in a difficult situation. Let's put it like that. Now, he tried knight d7. This often transposes simply to other systems. And, in fact, Carlsen decided just to go into a typical exchange variation of the Queen's Gambit. A very orthodox so far. Here, I quite like playing h6 and then playing knight h5 to free black's pieces. Useful sometimes to flick in that move uh, h6 because then white doesn't gain a tempo. But Artemiev played knight h5 immediately, so that forces the exchange of this bishop, which clears black's back rank a little bit, often a useful exchange in the queen's gambit for black. Carlsen, remember, he just needed two all in this match, but he's playing very sharply, decided to castle queenside. And here the standard move is to play h3 to stop bishop g4 and then to go bishop d3 or sometimes just g4. In fact, Carlson has played that himself before. Instead, Carlson went bishop d3, which allows bishop g4. You don't have to play that. Black can still play g6 and knight g7. But bishop g4, this is sort of the, the theoretically approved move. And now g6. And interestingly, Carlsen forced the exchange of bishop for knight here. Um, there's a game that uh, Nippon Nishi played with rook c1 here. I wonder whether Magnus has been studying Nepo's games in great detail. I suspect he has. But anyway, he didn't follow Nepo's move rook c1. He just put the question to the bishop straight away. And of course, having played bishop g4, you should exchange off. So we've got an imbalance in the position. Is white's structure weak or strong? There's an isolated pawn on h3. It's not so easy to force through e4 when you know, it would leave those f pawns looking very weak. Now here black has a big choice. Queenside or kingside? If the king goes kingside, then h4 followed by rook g1 and f4, well, it gives white a very natural attack. So I think, understandably, um, Artemiev went to the queen side. Could delay it a moment and play queen h4 first. I rather like that move, actually, preventing this pawn moving forward and keeping an eye on f2. But anyway, castle's queen side. Remember, this is rapid chess. You haven't got time to be too subtle. And queen b3 played by Carlsen, and he starts an attack on the queen side forcing through that pawn to a6. So queen e6 played to support the knight coming to c4. a6 and b6. So that pawn is potentially very annoying for black's king. It just opens things up a little bit. And, you know, it's one of those typical Carlsen moves that just makes life very uncomfortable for your opponent. Knight a4 may be looking to come in here. In fact, this is a very interesting moment. Here, Carlson played king a1. You could throw that knight in to b7. And, I mean, it looks like a, a very odd square for the knight. Um, it's sort of trapping itself on b7. However, very hard, obviously, to dislodge with the support of the a pawn. And actually, it controls some rather important squares in, in uh, black's position. It's just very unclear. But Carlson decides to play king a1. And that means that he can pl play the rook c1 without allowing knight d2. Artemiev defends solidly. Now Carlson just brought the knight back to c3. And played h4, so it means that this rook can now potentially move to the queen side without losing the pawn. Knight back to f6, I think that's very understandable. 
that knight out on a limb on h5. Rook c2, and already Artemiev was running a bit short of time. I have to say his time management altogether um, in the final against Carlsen wasn't fantastic. And the kind of situation that Carlsen, of course, really enjoys watching his opponent's clock tick down. Um, I wonder if Artemiev had, had more time, he might have played b5. It's a very risky move. Things start to open up risky for both sides. But, you know, it, now the knight can't come into c5, then it's kind of an interesting option, actually. And, you know, if white carelessly plays a move like knight a2, then c5 is very interesting with uh, the queen swinging across. I mean, that's not necessary, you know. White can play moves like queen here or queen a2, but still very unclear. But Artemiev kind of played solidly, just putting the knight back to d6. It's also fine for black. And then broke with c5. So this is a kind of orthodox continuation. And it's not without danger. Because, of course, there's a threat to play here and maybe taking here. Carlson played knight b5. And that sort of straightened things out. So things out, that puts the bishop on b5. And watch that king with the pawn on a6, it's always a little bit uncomfortable. And here, again, another moment where probably you'd like, you know, 15 or 20 minutes to really get to grips with this position. Um, Artemiev just held things with queen d6. You can actually play c4 here. And then put the knight back here and maybe play knight here. And if bishop takes... Well, this is quite an unclear position um, because basically white's rooks have been shut out of the game and this queen might be able to come in here, but you know you still have to watch out for queen b5 sometimes. Very unclear. And watch out for b3 as well. Very hard to assess this move, c4. Whenever there's a change in the nature of the pawn structure, that's always difficult to come to terms with when you're short of time. Queen d6 from Artemiev, so that's more solid. Queen a3, pinning, that's that uh, makes life a little bit difficult. King b8, brings the king away from a light square, that's very understandable. And king b1, so Carlson just holds things. Queen e7, so he might be looking potentially to exchange here, but, well, you've still got to watch out for the tactics here, of course. Rook c3. And here's a nice move, knight g8. So now that the queen is protected, then black is looking to take on d4. So after queen takes queen, you can recapture with the knight, and you're still safe on the c-file. So Carlson decided to liquidate. And this potentially could actually work out very nicely for black. I mean, with the exchange of pieces getting closer to an end game, which, given that these pawns are not the best, could actually be better for black. So, for example, queen takes, pawn takes, the king comes out very easily. You could even target the pawn on a6. This knight starts to hop into the game. Could well be better for black. But, of course, Carlson understands that, and he understands that black's king is still a little bit insecure, particularly with the pawn on a6, and he keeps the queens on. And, well, you can see already a, a, a check, potentially on f4, uh, the king has to watch out. So queen d6 played to cover that diagonal. Queen d4, the queen looking to get in again. Um, if knight f6, then e4 is an upsetting move. So Artemiev played f6. Well, now, again, if, if black has time, king c7, knight e7, and, and then, you know, potentially queen to e5, well, black could be fine here. So what should you play with white? Well, if e4, that's not so great because black can just give up a pawn temporarily. 
and the king comes to d6 and then the knight comes here you take the pawn back black is very fine in that position so what do you play with white how can you try and upset black here well carlson just played this very quickly and with artemiev well under a minute h5 a very unpleasant move to meet if that's taken then the queen just sweeps across and bishop here looking at this pawn seems like uh, white is going to recover the pawn on h5 uh, and well white's pieces look very good these pawns are split not so pleasant so what do you do about h5 well artemiev stayed solid with 97 so what does black uh, what does white do now carlson exchanged on g6 and swept across with queen h4 again so this is really nice somehow carlson is managing to generate play against black's king and this is not easy to defend now if you had more time perhaps you could do it but it's not easy to counter moves like queen a8 in fact the best move is d4 and if queen a8 Knight c8 just about holds things together. Together, even though there's a check on b7, in fact, the king is safe. Best move is to centralize the queen, but can white win this position? Lots of pawns exchanged. The knight is holding firm. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing defense, actually, but it seems that black is just about okay there. But after queen h8, Artemiev played... Well, let's say on feeling, he had to. He was down to just seconds. And he played queen b4. Feels as though black is getting the queen in. Should be a perpetual check. But Carlson had seen further. Queen e8 holds the bishop. And threatens queen d7 and queen b7 checkmate. And the problem is that if check... Well, in fact, there are two ways to avoid the perpetual. You can put the king here, and the king just lives on b3, and black hasn't got anything there. Checks have run out, so then there'll be queen b7, queen d7, and queen b7. So in the game, Artemiev tried king d6, a check. The king came up, scary. Bishop d3, threatening f4 mate. Artemiev defended with f5, but then just queen a7. And once again, there is no perpetual. You can play king a2 as before. Carlson played king c2, because if queen takes pawn, the king once again hides on b3, and the queen is way out of play. No more checks. And well, the knight is threatened, b6 is threatened, and of course the pawn is ready to touch down. In the game, Artemiev tried queen b4, queen c7 check, king f6, a7. Threatening to queen, queen a4 check, king d2, knight c6 holds for the moment, but queen b6 is decisive. There's a pin here, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's basically gone completely. King g5 steps out of the pin, but bishop c2 is very awkward for the queen, which has to guard a8. He also has to guard the knight, so that is an overload. Queen takes pawn, queen takes knight. Carlsen is a whole bishop up with a completely winning position, and of course Artemiev resigned. So that was game one. Um, very difficult for Artemiev to come back after that, and indeed... Uh, next game was drawn. Carlsen had to defend very accurately, actually. And then Carlsen won the third game smoothly. So that was that. Carlsen won with two sets to love. But really, the tone of the second day was set with this victory in game one. And once again, you know, I'm sort of marvelling at Carlsen's ability to just make life awkward for his opponent. I mean, that's the first thing just establishing that pawn on a6 and black's king permanently has to take guard now and really not easy when there's no good pawn cover actually um, 
And yeah, actually a very smooth performance from Carlson, not just in this match, this game, this match, but throughout the whole tournament. Very impressive. It looks like he's getting his act together for the World Championship match that takes place in November. Before then, we've got Norway Chess starting in a couple of days' time. We've got the final of the Champions Chess Tour, the grand finale, coming up at the end of September. So lots to look forward to. Don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. There's loads to look at on the channel and I post pretty regularly as well. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Oh, one last thing. Remember, on Power Play Chess merch, the Octopus Knight, Pin and Win and so on, there's 10% discount until tomorrow on Teespring. So do look out for the link in the comments in the, in the description as well. That's all. Thanks a lot.